Hello, this is Michael McCarthy. In this video, we're going to take a look at using Ornatrix to set up this kind of procedural feather system that we've made available as a sample scene up on our uh, doc site. We posted this a couple weeks ago, and I just thought I'd kind of go over the setup and, uh, you know, how, how to kind of build it up from scratch. So you can see that we have a couple of different setups here. We have these uh, feathers that are kind of meshes being generated by Ornatrix, and then, of course, a little wispy hairs on the edge of the feathers which are also being generated by Ornatrix. Now there's another sample scene as well as another video that goes over kind of a simple way uh, with just a basic mesh to generate these little fluffy hairs on the edge of a polygon feather and this takes it a little bit further and puts it into a more of a parametric system where you create the meshes for that with Ornatrix itself and you could propagate that over a deforming mesh. Here we have something simple for like kind of a headdress type of thing but you can see if this needed to be a deforming character or something like that, then that would not be a problem. First thing I'll do is just kind of break down this scene a little bit. Of course, we have our mesh, uh, which we are generating hairs from, and those hairs are kind of in the form of a feather shape. We have generated some guides, and I'll just turn off show end result so you can see that there. And hair from those guides, and you can see the mesh there, and then we form that mesh into something that looks like feathers with this kind of graph. We've then turned that mesh into, uh, or turned those hairs into a mesh, and from that mesh we are creating the little edge feathers. So you can see here's the reference stack of the number of different objects that are being referenced. Uh, you can see that this is the hairs that are getting generated on the edges. We're then kind of combing them up, generating some hair, and using some render detail and length in order to adjust that. So it's really a pretty simple process. Um, let's just get started from scratch. So I'm going to grab all these and just delete them. Okay, so now I can go and select this base mesh. I'm going to click on uh, quick hair in order to add some kind of automatic hair or Natrix modifiers to this. And of course it will reference our mesh, which is what we want. And I'll go down to the guides from surface. We certainly don't need quite so many guides, so I'll turn off end result and just set the root count of 100. I'm going to do the same for the hair because we don't need quite this many hairs. Uh, we're going to only be creating those feathers, so we'll set that to 100 too. Now in render settings, I can adjust the kind of look of this hair to be more of a feather type of look. So I'll do something like this. And that looks pretty good to me for now. Maybe I'll move these up a little bit and that little stem up a little bit. That's looking all right. And last but not least, we're going to add our Mesh from Strands option. So add Mesh from Strands modifier. That's going to allow us to create a mesh out of this that then we can use different 3ds Max modifiers on and generate our selection from. Very similar to what we did with the Mesh from the single feather video and sample scene that are up on our site. So I'm going to click on Mesh from Strands. We probably don't need this um, kind of cylindrical mesh, so we'll choose the flat billboards which looks good. And now we can proceed to create a selection on these edges that we'll need for growing some more hair. Before I do that, I'll just do a quick little edit guides and style these into a position that I might like. So you can see you can have a lot of great control over styling your feathers, whether it's on a headdress or a character or something else. Choose something like that. And I think that might be good for now. Maybe I'll swoop these down a little bit. Okay. Now, we'll do the same thing that we did before with a single feather, which is add our 3ds Max shell modifier. There we go right there. Uh, if you haven't seen that video or sample scene, please take a look at that uh, for more info there. And before, what we did is we chose select edges, which we could do here too. But just in the interest of uh, showing something new, let's uh, try the mat ID option. So we'll say uh, override edge ID and we'll set it to 3. Probably don't need them to be this thick. I'm going to set that to 0.1 which is pretty thin and there we go. So now we're ready to hand this off to another set of Ornatrix modifiers that are going to grow hair on the edges. To do that I'm just going to click on quick hair again and what that'll do is reference this object which is now a mesh object and create hair on those edges. Uh, of course, first it's going to create hair all over the place, and we'll have to edit that. So here is the aforementioned hair all over the place. 
we'll just go in quickly to OX guides from Surface. We certainly don't need them to be this long because they're going to be little hairs on the edges, so I'll set them like so to a guide length of about three. And we're going to need a lot more of those guides, so I'll set this to something like 5,000 because these are all over the edges. And I'm going to do the same for hair. Uh, the you know view count here is only 1,000. I'll actually set that to 10,000 so we can see a lot of these. Now, these are still being generated all over the mesh, which we need to adjust in hair from guides as well as guides from surface. So let's go to guides from surface. And instead of this uh, sub-object selection, which we used before, we're going to use the material ID. And we set that to 3. So there's that there. And if we go to hair, we want to use the same option, use material ID, and set that to 3. And what you'll see is now the hair and guides are generated from that material ID that was made by Shell. We can go in to our render settings. Probably don't need to be this thick, so I'm just going to make them a bit thinner. Here we've generated this, you know, hair, which is actually our feathers, and created a mesh out of it. And we've used Shell on top of that to uh, get a little bit more of a uh, double-sided mesh, as well as those edge edges, which will be crucial for adding hair to the edges and then we've generated a second little Ornatric system that's going to generate the hair on there. Now we can always go back, the nice thing about doing this fairly parametrically is we can always go back and we can brush this stuff very easily so if we want to make quick edits to our hair we can do that and of course everything is going to update which is great. Now this hair on the edges does need a little bit of grooming I'll just go down to the edit guides level and choose add surface comb and that's of course going to kind of comb it up. We can decide to uh, keep it a little tighter or we can uh, maybe wing out the ends a little bit like so if we wish. And that looks pretty interesting. And last but not least I'm going to add at the very top our length modifier. So here's a length modifier that'll first give us a little random length throughout which is going to make it look a little less uniform which is nice. And we'll go into our material editor and inside the material editor I'm going to grab this gradient. So this is the same gradient we used on the single feather in that previous sample scene and video. And we're just going to drag that into the length map. And you can see that'll uh, reduce or uh, you know completely remove the length uh, at the bottom, make it very, very short so you won't actually see those in the render. And these ones up here will be nice and long. So I'll just add our different contrasting materials so we can kind of see what we have going on. So this is how you can put together a parametric system for in this case uh, so a feather mesh that then has kind of feather hairs on the edges. This may or may not be the you know the feather workflow that you happen to be working with. You can do feathers with Ornatrix with proxies or all hair, propagation of hairs and other ways like that. I just thought this was kind of an interesting workflow that uh, kind of showed how to set up some feathers in a neat way and it also showed the parametric abilities of Ornatrix through 3ds Max, referencing objects and using some of the uh, Ornatrix modifiers that will allow you to leverage and kind of get what you need done in your production. So hopefully that will help you with your production workflows. Thank you very much.